do the man thing. Grab the shield. We found it. Valerian steel. <laughs> Shin guard. That's heavy, man. Those guys are tough back there. How cool is that? Morning, team. Morning. Morning. Have y'all had your wonderful Blue Island snickerdoodle? I have not yet. I have. It's my favorite tasting coffee so far. So anyways, today's going to be picks and shovels, and we're digging the gold. Mm -hmm. That's why we got so many of you. We got a lot of horsepower here. Alex, James, Josh, Zig, Connor's best friend. Connor Collins in the house. So this one's kind of unusual. I've been chasing this lead for quite some time. Get a call Wednesday night, which today is Thursday. Yes, most of the time we film Coffee Walk in real time because Zach is amazing at editing that quick. Alex and I left yesterday, got there at 9.30 in the morning, negotiated the deal till 2.30. Yeah. Actually, we got there at 10.30 in the morning, negotiated the deal till 2.30, took four hours. The reason that I didn't bring Zach, I didn't think the deal was going to close. I wasn't very confident. About two hours into it, it kind of went sideways, yeah. kind of came back around. Anyway, the deal's done. We've already bought these cars. But the caveat was we had to buy everything in the building. We had to buy his entire shop, all the tools, all the equipment, and even a sword collection. Yes, yep. I said a sword collection. But, and the reason I brought you, Josh, you're a Ford aficionado, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm trying to get him excited if y'all can't tell. <laughs> this is one of the pieces of gold that we dug out of this collection yesterday. 67 GT500 2.4 setup, the original one. Yeah, super cool. Super cool, so the garages are full of stuff everywhere. We didn't have time to go through all of it, even though we're taking it all. So we're bringing two trucks with single trailers behind them, one of the Rams with a dump trailer because it's a really heavy equipment, like heavy, heavy welders, like Bobcat 250, James wow. Reno equipment, right? Yeah. Some really neat stuff. And the two car enclosed because you got two oh. cars that need to be in the enclosed trailer, right? Lots of parts. So the way this lead started was a guy called me, has a lawn service and says, this guy used to own two 67 GT500 Shelbys and there's one in the garage. We've got stuff stacked around it. All I can see is under the hood. Sent me a picture of the motor, looked like a Craig Shelby motor. He goes, and it says GT on it. I'm like, hmm. He goes, and there's a GT40 downstairs in his old shop. I'm thinking, right. Sure. So, anyways, that's what stirred all this up. We went out there, bought all this stuff. This is going to be one worth watching all the way to the end because you won't believe what we get. So, I got my cup of Joe. Get your cup of Joe and let's go. We left last and got here first. I wonder how that happened. Oh, wow. so we're at the location. This car's been here for a long time. Uh, true car guy. I think you guys are going to be amazed at what you see. The first thing we're going to walk up on is look at the 67 Mustang Fastback. One of the ultimate things we like to rescue, right, Alex? Oh, yeah. Mustang Fastback from 64 and a half to 70. We're always looking for them. But that's what actually got the ball rolling on this entire deal which is going to be a big deal and lots of really cool stuff. You okay, Zig? Yes, sir. First time on camera since he just got back from the pro golf tour in, uh, where were you? Dubai, Dubai, Scotland. Spain and Portugal. So we actually brought him in case there's a golf club in here we need to identify, like a ping I-2 or something like that. Exactly, we'll see if we can make some money. So the, the one or two times I played golf with him, he laughed at my golf clubs. <laughs> I got them in high school in 81. They still work. We'll find you some new ones. Okay. How are you guys? Good, good. How's how are going? You? Good to see you again. Good to see you. So this is How's Clifton. Hi. Good to meet you. This is Zig. Good, good to meet you, sir. Good to meet you. Zach on the camera. This is Marla. Nice to meet you. Marla. All right. So would you want to start with the We want to look at the, the, main the 67 first. Okay. So. <laughs> You 
me a favor. There's some photos that I found in one of the files. Okay. It's on the top. It's I don't. It's not this car, but I think it's some of the other cars that he may have had. So, uh, like I told you guys this morning, this buy is a little bit unusual in the fact that I came out and met with Clifton yesterday for four hours. Yeah, it was a while. Yeah. <laughs> it was four <laughs> hours. <laughs> it might have been four and a half. But anyway, uh, the deal's already done. We bought them, so we're going to show you what we know, uh, and we're going to listen to Clifton to see what he's unearthed. But when we looked at this 67 yesterday, it was a head scratcher. Yeah. Number one, look over here. First thing that I always go to, is door warranty tag so we can tell what the car is. It does not have one. The buck tag's off the car, but what we did know right off the bat is the numbers are clear as day and in nice shape. It is an S code, so this car started life as a 390. So it was a big block 67 fastback, which is neat with Texas history. We've got right here is parked since 2006, but we actually found the original registration or Clifton did of when the guy bought the car, and it looks as if he's owned this car. I think it's since the 80s. There's a whole point to this. I'm getting to it. Oh. <laughs> I'm anxious to hear it. So we found the registration from when he bought the car, and the car was actually here in Frisco. Oh wow! Which we're in Frisco, Texas now, and so this car looks like it's been in Frisco from the majority of his life and he bought it in 1989 wow so on the car for quite a while now Clifton told me this this man owned a Shelby in the past yeah correct he, he, he had a shot I think it was a GT 350 I'm not exactly sure but let's see I think we found pictures of it the other day and those are the pictures that I found in the file. There may be others. Those are just the ones in the Mustang box. Okay. His car was a Brittany Blue 67 GT500. Oh. And it had parchment interior, as the, as the story goes. So if you'll look at this car, look at the interior, it's parchment. But, as Alex was looking on the shelf, there were some red parts over there. As you can see, the steering wheel's not correct on this car, but there's a, a yeah. red factory wheel in there, Alex. So, it's Thursday. Yesterday was Wednesday. Yes, uh, fortunately, I have some really good friends in the industry, and one of them is Kevin Marty. So I get home last night, I'm like, Kevin? Yes, Dennis, because I always need stuff in it immediately. Yeah. <laughs> They'd like to have a little bit of time to do some research. I said, right. I'm gonna go film this tomorrow, and I got a car that's a real head scratcher. Uh, it's green parchment interior which would have been highly unusual and probably not ever done that way okay. and but the guy used to own a Brittany blue parchment interior GT 500 well what he was doing is he was gonna clone this car back to that okay yeah I knew that whenever whenever I had talked to him when I originally met them eight nine years ago he had said that because when I looked at it I asked him I was like wow is that a Shelby and he goes no because all I saw was the, the engine block in there. It had Cobra headers and things like that because there was so much clutter around the car. You know, right. I didn't really get a chance to see the whole car. And he goes, actually, no, I'm, it's going to be a clone. And I was like, you know, it's a 67 Fastback. It doesn't matter what it is. It's cool. You sure. know what I mean? I d and I didn't know the reason. I mean, they had told me that he had one back in the day, so I was thinking maybe nostalgia, but I had no clue that he had went in and changed the interior color or anything like that. Now, so. a few things I'm putting these together in assumptions, but I believe them to be correct. So these are the correct 67 wheels, which I believe came off of his car, yeah. or one of the shovels he had. And when we left today, we showed you the intake carburetors, the complete setup for a 67 GT500 2 fours. So we okay, that's what that. you took that's yesterday. That's the one piece we took yeah, yesterday. Yeah, I saw that. Okay, cool. So he was well on to there. So the next step, he's already done the hard work. Yeah. Sourcing a complete parchment interior like that would be really difficult. Super straight car, looks to be rust free. So now, really, what needs to be done is paint it Brittany blue and put all the Shelby exterior accessories there, and you got a cool clone. Oh, yeah. So he's yeah. back where he was. But what this car started life as, oh, and if somebody would have told me that, I'd have been like, there's no way. This car started life as a 390 S-Code 4-speed, nice, 
325 track lock in the back. Great. Yeah. But it, this car was originally red on red. Red interior. Red on red when it left the factory. So thanks to Kevin Marty for that. That solved a lot of issues. Go to MartyAutoWorks.com. And there's the sheet on this that shows how this car started life. Now, a red on red 394 speed car in itself is rare. Um, with the limited slip, there was only 119 of them. And as I'll just red on red 394 speed cars, there's only 280. Yeah. Somebody could go back to that. I don't think so. I don't think so. Brittany Blue with parchment interior is stunning with a four speed. So there's a mystery on this car. Right, that's pretty cool. So we got Absolutely. that solved. Now, Today is going to be a long day. We've got three other rigs behind us. Oh wow! So yeah. four, we have four rigs coming in today to move all this. We're going to move this out first. Have Alex go through all this, get all the Mustang parts, sure. and this will be gone first. Absolutely. And then we'll go down and start digging. Pick, I call it picks and shovels digging the gold. Right. So it's I don't know, there. I don't know what we're going to find. Oh yeah. All right. We'll go down there and do a quick overview, but we are going to come back and load this one first, Alex, and get it out of here. All right. Sounds good. All right. All right. So looking at this car, and you'll see this guy's shop down there. He was he did a lot of his own work. He was a race car driver. Actually had his own race team. This looks like this is going to be a killer car once you get it fired back up again. Big aluminum radiator, electric fan, MSD, MSD, but power steering, power brakes, AC. This is going to be a great car to drive. Look how close the power booster is to the valve cover. It's got aluminum heads on it. Edelbrock aluminum heads. So, I mean, there's been a lot of money spent on this car. I, I think at this point it probably should go but stay as a resto mod, but I want to show you what's in the trunk. Do you know where the keys are to this thing? Oh, they're in the ignition. That's a good place to hide them. <laughs> hey, Dennis, did you see the uh, tag with the paper still on them? <laughs> no way. So these, this piece of paper, these have never been issued before. So brand new NOS set of 67 license plates, Texas. That's really cool. Yeah, it is. Look at this. Original heads and exhaust manifolds. C6 date code, so it'd be early 67 probably. So he just did the top end of the motor. It, it, possibly. Yeah, I'll have to run the numbers. Man, somebody did a big hard color change to green. I don't see time. red anywhere. Right here, look. Oh, yep. There's your red. Thanks again to Kevin Marty. So, I hate second guessing myself because usually my first initial thought is the way to go, but I, I, I think this car needs to stick the path he was going with it. I think so too. And just, you know, it is a very rare red, red car, but I think we go Brittany Blue. I think so too. There's good parts under the hood too. You see, it's got, well, you saw that, look at the heads. All right, and we have keys. Yes. I'm going to hide these back in the ignition and we're going to go down and show you what's to come for the rest of the day. All right, team, you ready to see what you got yourself into? Let's go. Always. That's the easy part. Follow me. <laughs> right, Clifton? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll see you trim the tree yeah. a little bit for us. I cut you a little path. So yesterday there wasn't really a path back here. There was this much that needed to be cut off. Okay. All right, well, we'll look at this out here. Little Mazda race car, Formula Star. Yeah. Not that y'all have to look at that, but we got to figure out how we get it out of here because it looks like it's sinking in the ground. So the trailer goes with this. This is all one piece. So we don't have to unload this. We just have to figure out how to get this out of here. Hmm. <laughs> Might have to go get some tires. Yeah. And this is probably going to be one of the easier things. And Connor, here's your new home, son. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just kidding, we didn't buy that. So team, everything in this building we bought, with the exception of that red toolbox, and there's a race go-kart up there. Yeah. Cliff is keeping that. So we're gonna go real quick, but then we're gonna go slow when we're loading this stuff so you guys can see this in detail, especially when we find something really cool. Alex raises his hand. Mm -hmm. Josh raises his hand. We find something cool. James can raise his hand. We find something really cool. I've already found really cool. Yeah, so. okay, the tool <laughs> stuff. So we've got for the as far as the cars go, we've got a '53 Ford convertible, which looks like it's been on rotisserie for a long time. Oh, Alex got it yesterday. He's had the rockers done. The floors have been done. Yeah, um, most of the body work has been done. 
right behind you is a flathead motor for it. Super cool. We've got uh, Offenhauser heads, all the speed equipment, Axel distributor, uh, new Edelbrock. Look, look, look like the 92 carburetors, yeah. but they're not. Um, I guess the reproduction was 94s, I'm sorry, Edelbrock 94s. I saw the receipt for this motor over there somewhere, but it was an expensive build. Here's the chassis and the frame for the 53, right here. So the welder goes, Mazda engine, and a knife and sword collection. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Probably get in trouble. Looks like some daggers and stuff too. Maybe we'll have a Collins Brothers sword fight. Sounds All that awesome. goes. <laughs> so, back to this. What is that, Alex? We got a 2JZ. 2JZ motor. We don't actually have anything to put that in, so if somebody out there needs that, yeah. give us a call. I know somebody will want that. So here is... Here's my favorite part. The deck lid and the sheet metal for the Ford, all the gauges for the Ford, steering column. What I haven't seen is the wheels and tires to yeah. help us get that chassis out. Show us your favorite part, Alex. So we got a Mark One GT40 replica, a small block and a ZF transaxle. Man, I can't wait to build this thing. So there's some pictures over here of, of all the work that he's done on this car. See, what I noticed up front that I was impressed with, this car's got AC. Yeah, it does. It's got AC. It looks like most of the plumbing's been done, the hard work's been done. It looks like he might have fired it too. Everything's hooked up, wiring, distributor. So as Alex said, it's got a ZF gearbox in it, which Josh, pretty familiar with those, right? Same it's the same gearbox as in the F1. Mm -hmm. So this guy was going for a high-end build. He wasn't cutting corners. Yeah. Uh, here's the motor as it came in the crate. But this, this was a complete bare chassis up build that he was doing. Picture of the chassis there. And the work was being done in this shop. But like I said, he had a race team and you can see he's got all the equipment in here to do what he needed to do. Is that a brake or a shear over there, James? It's a brake. It's a brake? Yes, sir. Somebody give me a brake. Here's the crate the body came in. Here's the chassis. So this, these were dated 2001. So he spent a tremendous amount of time on this. Yes, he did. Halibrand style wheels, which you'll see more of this when it comes out. I think this is one we should finish if you want to, Alex. It's up to you. I think I want to. Okay. I think we should paint it in the Gulf, Gulf livery colors. I think so. I don't know if it's livery or livery or what it is. I don't know how you say it. Okay, so, so far we've seen the, the Mazda race car, 53 Ford convertible. GT40 replica, 67 fastback, and a lot of tools. If we come up on something cool, we're going to show it to you. One of the things I spy from here is uh, James thought the brake was cool, but the Bobcat 250 welder up there. Is that a Miller? Yes, it is. A Miller. Very cool. So as we go through this stuff, I think we're going to find some neat 67 Shelby GT500 related parts, Alex. I think so. That's what we're really hunting for. Again, we found the intake carburetors and air cleaner yesterday. That was the one thing we pulled out, so. A few moments later. All right, watch the wall. Very good. Somebody want to get the steering wheel? First time in July today since either 2005 or 2006. It's either 15 or 16 years. It looks like more dust than that. It's barn fine now. Original wheels. I wonder if they came off his car. That's, that is my assumption that these wheels, intake, carburetors, air cleaner, and some other parts we sit sitting around came off his pretty blue car. Yeah.
That's the hope. I think I ended up back on this part. This is really cool up here. So that's a TI parking lot sticker from Denton, Texas. They haven't issued those stickers for a long, long time, since I think the early 80s, at least that style. So my dad worked at TI, so I'm familiar with the stickers. It's probably a local Dallas car. As you said, you looked underneath, there's no rust. Yeah, zero rust. Good example. We're having all kinds of technical issues today. All right, now that the car's out, I'm gonna show you something in this garage that this guy was a serious car guy. Yep. Josh, you see this? That had his own oh, pit. He's got a pit, that's cool. How many of those do you see in a residential house? Never cool. seen one like that. <laughs> Very cool. That's cool. So you can pull this grates out and you're underneath the car, you can service your car like you're at an oil place. So we're going to try to use every bit of space we can. Uh, that truck's going back to the shop ahead of everybody else. We're going to load the back of it with just miscellaneous stuff. It's a pretty tight fit back in the down end here. So the fastback will be the first thing out of here. Try to air up the tires on that. I don't think they're going to air up. It might be the bottom of it, but let's see. We really had to turn around because it wouldn't back down because the angle was too steep. Right? Right. So Katoa. You know what that means? <laughs> you didn't take, go to trig class? No, I didn't. You skipped that one too? I did. <laughs> sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. Don't know. Cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. I skipped that. Toa. Anybody know what Toa is? Come on. Anyone zig? And uh, I just deal with golf. <laughs> <laughs> Tangent equals opposite over adjacent. Come on, Con. I thought you'd get that. Absolutely. There's your math lesson for the day. Uh, well, oh, it was nice. broke before, so don't say I broke it. Did it was, you break that? that this, look at this tote. It's like it's about to break even if you don't move it. It's going to break. It's probably going to break as we're carrying it. It's so old. Because Connor broke it. Yeah, first I break everything. Let's go down there and see if that trailer will air up. Okay. I'm not super confident because it's been sitting there for a long time. Give it a try. So, Mazda Star Formula race car. I'm not going to even pretend to know much about those, but for somebody out there that does, there's an extra engine inside there. All the spares are in there. All the tools are in there as they raced it. Spare wheels. You got your whole race team. Might want to wash the trailer, but if you want an all-inclusive race team, hit us up because that's not really my cup of tea. And that's all I know about that. Is it all there? Outstanding. Yeah, it's really good, actually. Solid as Sears, Con Man? Yep. Solid as Sears. This one is, too? Yep. Okay, let's try the other side. Three out of four. See if you get lucky, Con Man. Oh, it's gone. Is it? Oh, yeah. It's moving. There it goes. It's coming up. Would you say that's outstanding? It's pretty outstanding. I would have to say so. But this one doesn't have a uh, tap. Look at that. All four are holding there. So Dennis got a GT40, and I had to get myself one too. That was the. All right, Josh, I got something over here for you. This is a very, very rare fact, and most people in the entire world don't know this. He is also a 911 expert. Getting there anyway. What is that? Is that Volkswagen or 911? Okay. It looks like a Volkswagen. I don't think that's a normal. Well, well, that's not what I hoped for, but I think it's a Volkswagen too. It was a trick question. Good Volkswagen. <laughs> some other way. As we dig through some of the stuff, find something I think is really cool. I'm hoping this car is complete. I crawled up in that attic yesterday, and the seats, correct seats, are up there for this car, which is really neat. Look at this. I don't want to scratch it. It's leather out.
Boom. Almost dropped it. I'm going to fail. No way. Boom. The original center cams. That's awesome. That's a key part right there. So when yeah. you get in and you sit out, it's the first thing you look at. Ford GT. Yeah, that's awesome. Outstanding. What you got there, Josh? I think it's a two liter Nissan. Oh, is it a Nissan? It's not a Mazda motor? It's a Nissan. How'd you figure that out? Um, deduction. <laughs> Well, I'm assuming that's a Mazda Formula 23 race car in there, but I don't know that for a fact. I think it's a Nissan. Is it a Nissan? Look at that. See there? It might be a Nissan race car in there. I said Mazda twice. It's the only paperwork I saw. Oh, is it? So maybe that's an extra motor for that. So if you don't want a Mazda race car team, you want a Nissan race car team, I changed my mind. There it is. So we've loaded up a bunch of miscellaneous stuff in the back of the truck. Some heavy stuff in the bins. I think most of it's 53 Ford. Obviously, we got the 67 Fastback on the trailer. This is the first load of stuff leaving. Not sure what the next load is going to be. Got a lot of guys, a lot of horsepower, but it is organized chaos at best. Josh is bringing his rig back here because he's got the Tommy lift on the back. We're going to load all the center section up that with tools yep. that he and Alex want to keep. And then we're going to put this on his single trailer and get that one up. And then we'll start loading all the stuff in the big trailer. Does that work? Works for me. Sounds good. You can drop it there, it's fine. Drop it like it's hot. So what we're doing now is Alex and Josh have gone through all the tools and James and decided which ones we can use at the shop. The ones that we can use at the shop are going to go in here, and then we've got the dump trailer. We're going to load that up with tools and equipment and stuff that we likely won't use. There's some organization, the first time of the day. And I have some cool news. What's that? Stuff that we didn't know, some, some more pieces to the puzzle. One of the neighbors just stopped by that knew him well and helped him work on the cars. The motor in the GT40 is a 351. 427 stroker crank motor. That's cool. So we would have That's eventually figured that out, but yeah. at least we know what we're trying. He said that motor has never been fired. Okay. The motor in the fastback is a 390 motor that they changed the top end on. And that motor ha does run. Okay. So that car has been driven like that before. Uh, Sideline, as we noticed up there, to yeah. front suspension issue, which didn't look like a big deal. So some more pieces of the puzzle. So we're going to load this up. What's going on in the back of the single trailer? 53 Ford convertible. And one more load out of here, and then we'll start loading the big ones. All right, so y'all think this will be too tall? No, this. So. Oh, well, you already did that. All you guys do is go like this, and now it's shorter. I think it'll fit. <laughs> Get the crane in here, Alex. Lift it up, turn it that way. Pull that in there, turn it this way, and put it in there. Sounds like a plan. That's a bunch of turning. Like this, like that. Hang on, watch out. Incoming controller. Y'all oh, pulled it out of my hand. Do you do that on purpose? No, sir. No. <laughs> okay, now we're going to swing it that way. What's the plan? Yeah. I can hit the button at any time. It's more fun if it is. Good. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That's good enough for putting it okay. on there. Yeah, if it goes, it's going to be ugly. What we're doing is we're actually using the winch and the hydraulic lift gate at the same time to be safe and the sink because it's so heavy. Once we get it another, we'll start the truck up and then we'll lift it on the crane in the back under it. Hopefully. Going 
Well, that obviously fell under the nothing's easy category. <laughs> Lots of hydraulic power, winch power, horsepower, people power, brain power. Just another Thursday called classic. That's right. <laughs> well, Josh, you missed us. Uh, you missed digging them out of the fields, at least, or the forest. <laughs> Thank goodness. That was difficult. Luck's changing for the better every day. Okay, that's good. So now we've got the Bobcat 250 down, which is really cool. It's got a self-contained generator that runs it. Killer welder, right, Alex? Yeah, we'll use it. We, we, I don't know if we're going to use it. I think I'm going to sell it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Now, where are we going to put that? I don't know, but those are probably the two hardest things to move. Agreed, everybody? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. A sheer brake roller that's 2,000, 3,000 pounds and a welder that's up in the attic. <laughs> wow. All right. So now we're going to start rolling and we're going to start cooking with grease or Crisco or something. So the, he was a knife collector and a sword collector, which came in the deal. And Clifton just found this Electra knife set, which I just so happened to have, the Electra pinball machine which is the first multi-level playing field pinball machine ever made. So how cool would that be to hang on the wall behind my electric pinball? It's going in the pool house. Get you some of that. So what we just found up here in the right hand corner is an engine run stand. Something I've never had, I've always wanted. So what it is, it's set up, it's got the cooling system on it, the electricals that you can run an engine outside of the car and check everything out and tune it. That's going to be really cool. So hopefully we'll show you in the near future of a motor on this stand outside of the car, hopefully it'll be a Porsche motor. Right, Josh? Yes, sir. Okay. Here, hang on, you're fixing to be up in this radio. Yeah, okay. That's it, go ahead. Pull up that way. Cool. Extra fittings for the radiator hoses. Haha, <laughs> that's gonna be fun. You got your gauges and everything, Josh. You know, it's almost yeah. set up for a course. The two front mounts, which just make something for the rear. That's gonna be great. And they're air cooled. You don't even have to worry about the radiator. So now we're gonna get the 53 Ford out and on the trailer that Josh is driving. We'll put the hood, deck lid, fenders and stuff like that in it, we'll strap it down. That way we can finally get to the GT40. And then we'll get the big trailer going, get the GT40 in it and start loading all the small stuff. So, I don't know what time it is because I don't have a watch. 2.30. It's 2.30. Zig knows. So, and the sun goes down at what? 5.30 now? Yep. yep. Three hours. Let's get it. So I understand these are desirable, Alex. Yes, they are. <laughs> think we should put the oil paint on it? No, I think we should uh, put it in the YJ. I figured you were going to say that. Probably fits. So, uh, pull it out. Hurrah. You want to do the heavy Ooh, part? That's heavy. I got it. Yeah, yeah. You're going to need some help. Hang on. You got that? It's good there. You got a 240-pound. Okay. Okay, it's heavier than it looks. You got it? Is, I say we just get out of the way for now. Yeah. In all seriousness, we're not going to put that in a YJ. If somebody needs that or wants that, please call the shop. We'll sell it to you. <laughs> hey, Dennis. Can I have this? <laughs> A medieval times helmet? Yeah. Out of everything in here, that's what you want? Yeah. <laughs> yes, you can have that. <laughs> and Alex hasn't asked me yet, but it's just kind of an assumption, which is fine with me. Yes, you can have all the model cars, Alex. <laughs> Thank you. And Connor and Zig, y'all can pick out a sword. Thank you, sir. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, I'm as you can see, this is a tricky spot back here. It's hard to get in and out of, but that's pretty much the situation we find ourselves in. <laughs> a bunch of people probably looking at like, no, I don't want to mess with that. <laughs> well, I think that's one reason why we get them. Because people think that's, show up and like, we're not getting this out We're not there. doing that. Yeah. yeah, we do some impossible uh, rescues, that's for sure. I, I don't know what that is, and the race car guys are going to probably shoot me because I don't. 
That's gonna go outside. Uh, that's that's an shop. outside toy? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay, I'm in for that. Yeah. Alright, let's get this out. Sounded a lot worse than it was. Now yeah, let's go towards you a little bit. I guess the witch, the witch will pull it that way, won't it? Yeah. All right. Okay. Once again, nothing's easy. I think the first thing we should do with this car, Alex, is hook the steering up. That's a good idea. <laughs> All right. Don't have Come on down. Go slow, James. I'm good. Go ahead, sir. Ford GT40 is on the trailer. Looks like it's been sitting in there since around 2001. It's only 20 years. It fought us as well. Of course, the suspension's not completely hooked up, so it's steer. It's low to the ground. Just fell in the nothing's easy category, but it's worth it. It's worth the hard work, though. It's a super cool car, so. Not sure what we're gonna do next, because we still have a body in there and a gazillion parts. We're gonna try to get the big trailer down here. Don't think it'll fit, so. Getting a little bit tired, to be honest with you. I think we got about another hour before sundown, but we're gonna get this out of there and really get after it because we've got a lot of guys and trying to load everything else in the enclosed trailer. So go for GT or GT4. Come on! <laughs> Made it! Josh, he was credit card fan. Not even a half inch. We were afraid the trailer was going to drag on the tongue because we've got a lot of weight in this old Ford. <laughs> so we'll pull this up there. Hook it behind Josh, give him some more weight. He's about to stroke out about that anyways. They pull this to the street. There you go. Yeah. That was one direct to traffic. there, Junior. Hey, it's all right. Let's get this done. I'm about ready to blow this popsicle stand. All right, outstanding. Let it rip, Tater Chip. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> it's clear. It's gonna click. It's, it's clear. Yeah, it's already clear. We're clear by. 
Okay, so what do we do? Not by much. So we got the 53 Ford and it just barely made it like less than a half inch from the roof of fitting. We've got the chassis left down there and still a ton of ancillary good stuff. So our next truck up, which is our fourth truck that we brought, it's got a dump trailer in the back. It's a 20 cubic yard area of dump room that we're going to fill up with good stuff. I'm not giving up. We're going to finish this today. We're going to go eat some killer steaks. Okay, so now we're going to get the chassis out to the 53 Ford convertible. We haven't found the wheels and tires to it, which is kind of odd, but here's the absolutely stunningly beautiful flathead V8. So Alex is going to take the front and I'm going to be in control of the back. So we're going to put it in the dump trailer, yank it up there, get in the enclosed trailer, then we can finally get all these small pieces loaded up and out of here. Yep. All right, let's do that. Let's take these plate, well, I don't know. This probably not this Roll it closer. All right, muscles. Y'all ready? That's a heavy old chassis. It is. I'll show you Willy Wonka is. Heard of it. So maybe that's a golden ticket chassis. Anyone? Nobody's gonna laugh at that. Not even you, Josh. Oh. <laughs> James laughed. I think it's funnier that nobody laughed at it. See my jokes now. Kelsey tells me this. I didn't believe it, but I'm starting to believe it. Are all dad jokes? These guys don't know what any of this stuff means. You want me to back up some more so we can set it? Do you get my analogy, James? Yes, it's gold. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, so we got the chassis out of there. The last crazy difficult thing to move around it takes a lot of horsepower. We're literally muscling all this around. There's still quite a bit in there, but I am confident it's all gonna be in that trailer before six o'clock. Right, Zig? Yes, sir. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Okay, y'all can set it down. Just don't beat your fingers. <laughs> God. I love working. <laughs> God. <laughs> Where you going, Connor? Fucking it off. Come back, buddy. He's walking off and hit his shin. <laughs> oh, did he? Sorry, He's Junior. That's why I bought you those Waterburger boots, Con, so it wouldn't hurt your shin. <laughs> Don't go all that far up. Are they, they Waterburger boots? Water. Yeah. Let's see those babies. Check oh, it out. How cool is that? <laughs> I thought he was running from the work. Love it. <laughs> I haven't quite had enough time to figure out what this is yet. Yeah. Alex did find the chassis number on it. So if you'll show Zach where that is, because I want to show some, so maybe somebody out there that's interested in this car can tell us exactly what it is. But we're going to lift the bonnet off so we can see the drivetrain. Or the rear engine cover. Which is going to be a little on the pain, but not totally bad. Okay. You need to get up over there. Is, there, is it latched? No. Okay. Cool. All right, go ahead and go up. So, looks like a rotary to me, Alex. Yes, it is. Okay, so now we solve that problem. It, it is a Mazda, like I thought earlier, not a Nissan. I don't know why there's a Nissan engine there, so it's rotary powered. Pretty cool. And that is what that transmission case is. It's sitting in there. It looks like a Volkswagen. Okay, so we got a rotary powered Mazda something race car, and then Alex is going to show you the chassis number. And all these spares go with it, all the stuff in front of the trailer, these wheels, tires. This is cool, Alex. Ford versus Ferrari. Cool. Ford by Bob Bondurant, who just passed away. He was a really cool guy, one of the best drivers in the world. I actually got to run some laps with him. He was an incredible driver cool. in that Shelby Series 1 Daytona. So, rest in peace, Bob. So, Zig, it's your first time on Coffee Walk. What do you think? Awesome. A lot of hard work y'all put in. Are those car parts? No, sir. <laughs> I think it's the first time we've ever bought a sword collection on Coffee Walk, so you're here for that at That's least. Why you brought me in. That's right, you're gonna handle the swords. For the non car. I told you they were golf clubs, but they're really not. That's the closest thing I got, so. So get after it. All right.
Thank you. Yes, sir. Cool. We found it. Valerian steel. <laughs> Shin guard. That's heavy, man. Those guys are tough back yeah. there. How cool is that? So we came, we saw, we caught. We got the flathead in here. We got the 2JZ motor in here. We have the unknown Nissan motor in here. I think Josh is going to put that in his Ford truck, maybe. Yeah, we'll see. Either that or we'll you know, make some kind of piece of equipment out of it. Make a go kart out of it. We've got over 100 sores. I don't know what we're going to do with that. Tons of tools, four trucks, four trailers are completely full. We started at 8.30 this morning. It is now 5.30. Not a single complaint out of anybody here all day. And nobody's eaten. Sorry for that. No worries. I have already gotten in trouble for that. My wife has already texted me multiple times. You had not fed those guys yet? <laughs> no, honey, I have not, and I haven't eaten either. But we're going to Zach's favorite steakhouse in Frisco, Texas, which is where we are. It's called Hoffs and Stein. Now, this is going to be the first time that we didn't finish something in one solid day that we planned on doing in one solid day. I should have scheduled two days for this. So we will be back tomorrow to get all that, all that, the compressor, the race car, the race car trailer, and then some other miscellaneous stuff. So go with us to Hofstenstein. It's supposed to be outstanding. Anybody hungry? We're starving. Always. Okay. Starving and always. All right, we got our own table. This ought to do it. We'll do the pretzel. Worst taste. Worst taste is one sausage, so do you want one or do you want one? I want the, sam the sampler thing. Oh, that, oh yeah. We're talking the big stuff. There's yeah. eight. There's eight of us. Uh, buffalo quail. Oh, my favorite. Do you want that tossed in barbecue sauce, buffalo, or uh, one in barbecue and one in mild? Okay. So we we'll do two of those as well. And then we'll do the happy fries times two. And what, are, what am I missing? What do you recommend uh, for an appetizer? Kinds of oysters. Bring us some oysters. I don't know how many people eat those, but I will. Okay. <laughs> so do you want half a dozen in, or do you want a whole dozen? Half a dozen is fine, because okay. I don't know how many people will participate in that. Is it half? Okay. I'll bring a dozen. A dozen. Okay. Now, what about drinks? Drinks? Uh -huh. You want to throw a drink? I would like a, uh, a water and an unsweet tea. Okay. I can manage that. What do we got? Well, I just added fresh horse on the half shell with a lot of horseradish. We got buffalo. Here, so you can keep that one down there. Called snake bites. Pretty tangy. We got quail, pretzel, French fries, Polish sausages down there, and some more craziness on its way. So the hop is a 32 ounce tomahawk. Okay. No, we want the oh. bone. You want me to bring it out on the bone? Sliced. Sliced. Medium okay. rare. So he can put it on the bottom. Right? Okay, I'm following the way. Slice on the. Yeah, I'll, I'll take uh, yes, sir. one of the Haas salads. Uh -huh. And since the other ones are getting split up on the table, just to uh, make the rest of the potato salad cold slaw. Okay. That makes sense? Yeah. Unless like somebody else wants a Haas salad and they didn't get a steak. I'm calling it Haas, I think it's house, but it's a Haas steak. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't hassle the hog. <laughs> we have five sides left, right? Um, yeah. So we'll do three potato salads and two coleslaws. Okay. I'll I'm get just going to guess at what you're getting. <laughs> I'm just going to guess. What I is don't it? know. What is it? I'm going to say the schnitzel because it's like chicken fried steak. Nope. And macaroni and cheese. Oh, you got one right. <laughs> Double or mac. I'll get the, uh, the ribeye with uh -huh. mac. <laughs> You guys are having like 64 ounces of ribeye right here and you're still going to order individual ribeyes? Like, 
Okay. So that's, what, that's, yeah. that's just the way you don't know what we did today. <laughs> I probably <laughs> don't want to know now that you started the statement <laughs> that way. We're about to be sold out of Tomahawk's ribeyes down there. Okay, so ribeye, and then you want mac and cheese with it? Is yes. that what you said? Oh, wait, did it? Wait. <laughs> he does. Okay, medium rare? Yes. Okay. There's three oysters left. No, well, thank you. I'll give you a hundred bucks to eat one. You know he's not going to do it. Last time he said no, hundred nope. bucks. Hey, dude, oh, if you don't, don't do it, it. if you don't eat that oyster for a hundred dollars, yeah. we just ran the math on how much beef we ordered. We may have ordered too much. <laughs> not sure if it's my fault or not, but we're at eleven point seven five pounds of beef, right, Zig? Yes, sir. So let's just call it twelve pounds. Nine people. <laughs> we have over a pound of beef per person, and every side they have, sometimes two. Not everybody's hungry, so Let's see what happens. Josh, are you happy? <laughs> we ordered these on top of the 11.75 pounds of beef. I'm not sure why. I think it was Zig and Connor. <laughs> Is that enough rib for you guys? Plenty. <laughs> wow, it's beautiful. So, Zach, what did you order? The cowboy. It's kind of bland. It's a Lone Ranger. It's kind of small. <laughs> Where's all your vegetables? It's a good thing we ordered some down. It's a good thing we have extra food down here. Well, you want a rib? No. Why not? Look at these things. I'll take a rib. No pressure. Hey, that's why. You gotta have at least one. This feels it's like a pressure. jalapenos too. I get, I get you say no pressure, but it feels like pressure. No pressure, Zach. Thank you. Look at the tomahawk. Holy shit. Holy. Holy. So wow. that is what I'm talking about and referring to. <laughs> All right. That is crazy. See, aren't you wishing you were participating in this? No, hold on. As a matter of fact, you are. You know, Alex, you can just, you can take my job now. You're way better at holding the camera than I am. So much better. Look at that thing. That. that looks amazing. Oh, yeah. That well, good. So everybody enjoying this? Oh yes, yeah, sir. Thanks All right, sir. I got a recommendation. This is the best bite, in my opinion. Oh, here we go. Medium rare tomahawk. It is beautiful. Yeah. Candy rib. Put them together. Uh oh. You have got the best bite. The perfect bite. There you go. Got okay, it. so 11.75 <laughs> pounds of beef, two racks of ribs. We conquered that. There's one rib left, a little bit of tomahawk, and we saved this for a very special person back at the shop because he has dry verticulitis and just couldn't make it. <laughs> right? <laughs> so we're going to wrap that up. We're going to pray for him, get it back there. It's going to fix his dry verticulitis. I'm sure of that. <laughs> Absolutely. Now I ordered some desserts. Everybody freaked out. So I think we're going to wrap it up here. Hoff Steak and Steins. Fantastic in Frisco, Texas. Zach's home ground and stopping grounds. Thank you guys for working so hard today. I mean, I, I greatly appreciate it. And that's how you succeed in life. Work hard, play hard, and eat a lot. See you next time.